So, everybody is muted. I'm spotlighted on your screen, although some of the time there won't be really anything exciting to see, but we're going to we're going to do that anyways. And then, uh, hi, Ben. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm going to pop on a little bit of music for you guys. Let's start lying down. Oh, I'm trying to unlock my phone. It's like, yeah, that's not your fingerprint. <laughs> Oh, it's fun. All right. Stand by everybody. I'll get it I'll get it together at some point. <laughs> All right. So come to a reclining position from wherever you are. And from your reclining position, you can have your knees bent or your legs stretched out. Really just be comfortable. That's the main thing. And take an exaggerated breath in and let it go. And take another breath in. And let it go. And one more time, inhaling. And let it go. Feel the ground beneath you. Sense the air on your skin. You might imagine being plugged into the earth, able to recharge simply from this contact between you and the earth. Let's slowly start to move the joints. Raise the right leg in the air and rotate the ankle, making slow circles. If that leg position isn't comfortable, you can put the, put the leg anywhere you want, as long as you're free to move the ankle. Rotate the other way. And now move the lower leg stirring the shin and the foot around and reverse and now the knee is moving so the movement happens in the hip joint generous circles Go the other way. And touch the foot down. Same side. Stretch the whole leg out long and the arm that goes with it. So that whole side of your body is stretched out, lengthening. And then relax it. And do that again. Stretch out and lengthen. And relax one more time. Inhale, stretch out, lengthen. Hold here. Keep breathing. Just hold the length. And then let it go. Release the arm. And place the foot down. And raise the other leg. Rotate the... 
reverse direction. And now the knee, swinging the shin around. And now knee circles moving from the hip joint. Go the other way. And touch the foot down, stretch the leg out long, reach the arm overhead, lengthen the whole, this whole side of the body, squeeze, and exhale, release. Two more times, squeeze, and release. Last time, squeeze and hold here. Hold and hold and hold and hold. And let it go. Bring the arm down. Bend the knees. Bring one knee, then both knees all the way into the chest. Rock side to side. And now with the knees together, circle them around so you feel the back of the sacrum and the pelvis. It's almost like a little massage for that low part of your back and across the back of the pelvis. Go the other way. Now, if your SI joint is, is a little tender today, you can detour around it if that feels unpleasant. And come on back to center. Take the, keep the knees hugged in, but take the arms out wide to the sides. And we'll keep the knees fairly close to the chest. They can be closer or further apart from each other so that your hips are comfortable. And then bring the knees over toward one elbow, but don't let your shoulder blade lift up. Pull the belly button in. And then bring knees over toward the other elbow. They're not going to touch the ground, but they're going to move in the direction of the elbow. And then they'll come back to center. So zip up the belly, curl yourself toward your elbow, and then come on back. So we're using muscles in the lower body while keeping the upper back flat on the mat. So it doesn't matter how far the knees go over, it's just however far they can go with some, some semblance of control. Kind of a fetal version of Jatara Parivartanasana. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, disc herniation whereabouts, huh? Yeah, where? Like L4, L5? Okay. So anything that causes discomfort, that causes pain, that the pain that you're familiar with, don't do that. Okay, so feel free to ignore what I say at any time in favor of taking care of yourself. Yeah. And then as we come back to center, Touch the feet down. And so one of the things that, since somebody mentioned uh, uh, disc herniations, one of the things that can be useful um, to help protect us, whether we're dealing with an injury or not, is to shore up the muscles that make this inner corset in our torso. So our mission for right now, with the knees bent and the feet flat, is leave the legs as they are. As you inhale, let the belly rise. It does whatever it wants. As you exhale, pull the belly button down. And as if you're like tightening a, a, a drawstring on your pants, pulling in, like hugging in your corset. Inhale, let the belly rise. 
and exhale, pull the belly button down to your, your mat and your low back and cinch in your inner corset. Inhale, the belly rises. Exhale, cinching in the waistline. Just like that. So that you feel some of these muscles in the torso engaging. And while you're doing that, there's not a lot of movement along the spine. Now, keep that same idea of cinching in and pulling the belly button down, but we'll add some movement with the, with the legs. Our mission here is to uh, move as little as possible with the pelvis. So you'll exhale and raise a leg. Keep the knee bent. Inhale and lower the leg. And exhale and raise the leg. Inhale and lower the leg. And keep some amount of that cinching in the whole time. Now, it doesn't have to be super strong preventing you from taking a breath, but enough that you know you're working here. Now, if that feels all right, raise one leg and switch the legs in the air. One leg goes up, the other leg goes down. Same idea, keep the, the torso steady. Now, if you feel like straightening the legs more and doing this with longer levers, you can absolutely do that. Go slowly. This isn't about momentum. There's a mobility piece to it. And there's a strength piece, a considerable strength piece of hold the pelvis as steady as you can while the legs are moving around. Bend the knees, touch the feet down. Open the arms out wide to the sides. And heel toe your feet out, mat width or wider apart. Tip the knees side by side to side, uh, windshield wipers. Tip over to one side. Go slowly, go gently. So my friends with low back stuff, with SI joint stuff, with disc issues, um, I think that's all that was mentioned just for today. But if you've got any kind of low back stuff and this movement feels aggravating rather than kind of nice or neutral, then don't go to the extent where it feels like it's aggravating. You're in charge of your body. Tune in and listen to it and adjust accordingly. Return to center. Walk the feet in. And then stretch one leg out long. Actually, I take that back. Bend both knees. Take your hands to the tops of your thighs. Hands to the thigh tops. And again, zipping up the belly and cinching in your inner corset. As you exhale, cinch in and press the thighs away. Inhale, relax the effort. And exhale again, cinch in and press the thighs away. Inhale, relax the effort. Two more times. Cinch in and press the thighs away. Inhale, relax the effort. And last time, cinch in, press the thighs away. And relax. From here, bend the right knee. Keep it hugged in. Take the left leg. Step on the ceiling with the left leg. Breathe here slowly. Keep the belly zipped up and slowly lower the left leg until it's hovering above the mat. And then lower it all the way down. The heel touches the mat. Breathe while you're here. And reach with the bottom leg 
as if you were pressing the sole of the foot into a wall. If you have a wall handy, you can use an actual wall, but it's not mandatory. And take the right knee out to the right. Leave it there, take a couple breaths. And the right hand can provide support or encouragement or resistance even. Exhale, come back to center. Bring both knees into the chest. Keep the left knee this time. Stretch the other leg out. Slowly down. Hover before you touch down on the mat. And then come all the way down. Breathe while you're here. One knee hugged into the chest. In Sanskrit, we call this Ardha Apanasana. Breathing in, breathing out. And keep the bottom leg very awake, anchored by the heel into the earth and reaching as if the foot were pressing into a wall. Left knee goes out to the left. Stay there. Don't let the pelvis tip over. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And on an exhale, come back to center. Bring both knees in. Rock a little side to side. Rock all the way over to your right side. And as you come over onto your right side, you'll find a fetal position. And let's work with the upper body first. Your bottom arm can be a pillow, or you can rest your head on something and reach your bottom arm out on the floor in front of your chest. Top hand rests either on the bottom arm or just on the floor reaching out. Inhale, open up. Open up your book, come into a twist. Exhale, close your book. And just like that, remember the arm is just a a facilitator of the twist. The twist in the spine is what we're after in the upper back. So we leave the legs where they are. And the place that we want to twist from is from the rib cage, from the bottom of the rib cage all the way up to the shoulders, the head, the neck, if you want to turn that neck. You can watch the thumb that's moving as it goes back over the shoulder. Watch the thumb as it comes back. Good. Now relax the arm for a moment and roll that shoulder. Shrug the shoulder. So we'll stay on our side for a bit. Make shoulder shrugs. For some reason I had trouble with that word today. Shoulder shrugs. Now make elbow circles. Still slow. Incorporate a little bit of rotation in the rib cage while you're doing the elbow circles. Go the other way with your elbow circles. Go nice and slowly as your elbow goes back behind you. That's when you're opening up here in the twist. And as your elbow goes out in front of you, you're on your side again. And then Either one more round in each direction of elbow circles, or if it feels okay, extend the arm a little or a lot to make large circles. Again, while you're twisting and untwisting. When the arm goes back, that's when you're in the twist. When you roll onto your side, you're reaching out in front of you. And you decide how far to reach that's it. Go the other way. Nice and slowly. All the way around. And this time, as you open up, stay in the twist. Stay in the twist with the arms, however you like them. And take a few breaths here and imagine even though you're in a twist, there's a little bit of a, a 
tugging long, like there's a puppet string tugging the crown of your head in one direction and your tailbone in the opposite direction and it's lengthening you, giving you space along your spine. Slowly, gently, zip up your belly and make your way to your back and over to the other side. And as you change sides once again, find a fetal position to start in. Reach the top arm out in front of you. And we'll begin with the open and close the book movement so the arms are straight. One arm if you're using the other as a pillow. Close the book, reach out in front of you on the exhale. Open your book, you're in the twist on the inhale. If it's tolerated, follow the moving thumb. And again, in all of these movements, as we change the way the arm moves, it really is just to facilitate some different ways of moving along the spine. The next time you close your book, pause on your side and shrug the shoulder. Roll the shoulder up and back, down and around. Just the shoulder at first. Turn that into elbow circles. Let the body twist and untwist with your elbow circles. Yeah, so as, you're, yeah, as you reach your elbow back, you're opening the chest to the sky. And then the other way. And I notice sometimes when I'm doing the elbow circles, I feel more of like a chest stretch than when I do it with a straight arm. So just notice what appears, what you observe here. Now with a straighter arm, making circles. Reach into larger circles if it feels okay. Reverse direction. Yeah, if you start knocking things down that you couldn't reach before, that's a good sign. And when you're ready, open up in the twist and stay there. Stay there and breathe. Legs stay where they are. Visualize a long spine. Crown of the head being tugged in one direction and the tailbone in the other direction and your spine getting longer in between. Take another breath in and out. Deep breath here. When you're ready, gently back over to your side. We're going to stay on our sides. Now, two ways to do this next movement. Um, actually, way number one will just be for mobility. We'll all, we'll all do this first one the same way. Lie down on your side. Same side, yeah. We'll start on this side, then we'll flip over. So from the left side, lift and lower the knee. This is for mobility. So yes, you're allowed to let the hip tip back if it causes any discomfort in the low back or in the sacrum or really anywhere at all. You can minimize the movement so that the range works for you today. Just that. Mm -hmm. Now, Rest the leg, and our next mission will be to do the same movement but for strength rather than for, for range of motion. You can add a little extra core. Okay, okay it's not a little. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you can add core work to it if you want, extra core work. So option one, 
is everything else looks the same. You're lying on your side, heads resting on something. Keep the pelvis on, right up on its edge, and you lift and lower the knee about 30 degrees. No more than 30, because guess what, right? If the knee goes higher, the pelvis kind of has no choice. It's going to tilt back, and then it's fine for mobility, but it's not really useful for strengthening. If you want the extra, extra core, so first way of extra core work is do that, but zip up your belly while you're doing it. Please do that. Um, the other option is come up on your forearm, lift your torso, and do the same movement. <laughs> there, there's some laughter in the room. I'm just going to let the folks at home know. <laughs> just in case you're laughing in your home, <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> That's it. Bonnie, can you lift your hip? <laughs> yeah. I got it, got it. So choose your, your favorite method and then come down. <laughs> come down and change sides. On for your side hip. Perfect. Yeah, double that. Oh. Yeah, either, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, switch over and use that extra padding for the second side. What muscle are we working on? Gluteus medius is the muscle that we're looking to strengthen here. You'll know if you're strengthening in that area. If you feel, so if you're lying down on your right side, as you raise and lower the the knee, you should feel it in your left outer kind of butt cheek area, more to the side of the butt cheek than the back, because gluteus medius wraps around the side. Also, if you're doing the one up on the forearm and you're lifting your hips, this is core stabilization. So we're engaging a number of muscles that wrap around our torso. Does that, does that answer the question? OK, thanks, Sheree. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. So, <laughs> so what about is lift and lower the hip tolerated or is that not okay at all? Okay. So that might be kind of the like bridging the gap. Just a little lift and lower and exhale and really shore up your core as you do it. Yeah. And don't worry about how high you lift. This is really just to engage your core and get a little bit of that strengthening that we were talking about before class. I did like, oh, that terrible strengthening that I asked for. <laughs> All right. Once you're done on this side, come to any reclining position. Rock a little side to side. And touch your feet down, heel toe your feet wide, rock the knees, windshield wiper style, side to side again. Shoulders relax, arms comfortably wide. Move at your pace and as far to each side as feels good. Return to center, walk the feet back in. Arms can come in a little bit if they were wide in a T. And we'll do a, this is a segmented bridge pose. So how we come up is more important by far than how high you're lifting. So we'll start with, we've been talking about core stability and back stuff today. So first, pull your belly button down. Your low back gets flatter. Squeeze your glutes. Can you squeeze your glutes and make your bum, even if it doesn't fully lift up off the mat, can you make your bum a little lighter on the mat without lifting your low back? And then relax your bum. Rest here. Same thing, just the abs and the glutes. Pull the belly button down, down towards your mat. Squeeze your glutes. Make your, make your bum lighter, but draw, lift your low back and release. Now let's invite the low back, but it 
has to wait its turn. So the glutes are going to come up first, and then the low back has its turn, and it can lift. So pull the belly button down. That stays the whole time. Squeeze the glutes and lift them. Peel the low back up, but keep your ribs on the mat. Slowly lower your low back, and then let your bum come down. Breathe here. Let's do it again just like that. Pull the belly button down. Squeeze the glutes and lift them. Let the low back peel up. Keep the ribs down. Slowly lower the low back. And then your bum. Now, if you feel this a lot in your hamstrings and your glutes, that's, it's kind of good news. If you're getting a cramp, then move your legs around. But uh, provided that's not happening, if you're feeling effort in the legs, that's, that's what we're aiming to do, to take the strain off the back. All right, this time the ribs can lift, but they have to come up gradually and follow the pattern that we've established. So same thing, pull the belly button down, squeeze the glutes and lift them, then the low back lifts, then the lowest ribs start to lift to however far the rib cage wants to peel up. Stay there, take a couple breaths, and slowly the rib cage comes down, then the low back, and then your glutes. Relax when you get there. Same thing, belly button pulls in. Squeeze and lift the glutes, lift the low back. Lift the rib cage from the bottom upward. Stay lifted wherever you are. And gradually lower down rib cage, low back, and glutes. And sometimes it's just in your imagination that they come down in that order. All right. Two more times, we're inviting the arms to come up. They are going to come up after the rib cage starts to lift because they'll help us lift the the shoulder plates a little bit. All right, zip up the belly, squeeze and lift the glutes, lift the low back, lift the bottom ribs, and then the arms can go up toward the ceiling and as far overhead as they want to go. Stay there, wherever there is, and then the arms start to come down. Roll over your shoulder blades. Bottom ribs come down, low back comes down, and then your glutes. One more time, just like that. Zip up the belly, squeeze the glutes and lift them. The low back lifts, the lowest ribs lift, the arms start to come up, the arms go as far overhead as they want, and you stay right there, however much that lifts you. Take your time coming down. The arms start to lower, bringing the shoulder blades down, the bottom ribs down, the low back down, and the glutes. Nicely done. Bend the knees, take happy baby. Hands behind the thighs, or walk your hands up the shins. Relax the head and the neck. Rock gently. Breathe. Good. Come back to center. Now, little knee pumps. Hug your knees towards your chest. Now, this, an this is another place where, according to what feels right for your back, if you're being more protective of your back today, keep the movement small. So it's a little squeeze of the knees and let it go. Squeeze and let go. Squeeze and let go. There's a, there's a little momentum to it. And then if your back is feeling fine and fabulous and you want to kick the feet up a little more, you can. Again, you're inside your body. You are in charge of the movement. All right. Rock over to any side. Hands to press up. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Hi there. Let's come to any seated position. We'll move the, the head and the neck around a little bit. Move our spine around too. 
Make some half circles with your head. So once you're sitting up tall, chin goes down to center. Slowly take your head over to one side and pause. Nice and slowly back through center and to the other side and pause. When I move my head around, my mask covers my face and then I can't see anybody. <laughs> like, what happened? Where did everybody go? All right, come on back to center. Slowly bring the head to upright. Sit nice and tall. Turn the head over to one side. Look over one shoulder. And then over to the other shoulder. And have your eyes like... like you have a laser level inside your eyeball, so you're at the same height. Right? Sometimes the little tight spots in our neck will cause the head to kind of like take some other circuitous route, some other kind of arc as we rotate. So nice and tall. As you come back to center now, right ear to the right shoulder. Gently up to center, left ear to left shoulder. Gently up to center. One more time each side like that. Back to center, over to the other side. Back to center. Compound movement down toward our left armpit and then up like you're looking up at the high corner of the room on this side. So look down toward your left armpit and then sweep up and right and up and right and up and right until you're looking as high and as right as you can. And then back down to the armpit. One more time. High and right, high and right, high and right and back down to the armpit. Gently back to center. Look down to the right armpit. High and left, nice and slow. And try to isolate the movement. I know for me, like I want to curl this way and I want to arch this way. Don't invite the rest of the spine yet. <laughs> try and keep it limited to the neck. Down to the armpit, up and left. Back down and release. Roll your shoulders. And now make circles with your rib cage. So again, if you're being a little more protective with your low back, you might hug in and engage the muscles a bit more strongly and perhaps make the movement a bit smaller in magnitude, but really hug it in. Go the other way. Yeah, that's it, body. <laughs> so this is another place where the stakes are low, right? You can engage your core. <laughs> it's not a big, like, ab crunch looking thing, but it's another opportunity to teach those muscles how to help support you. And come back to center. If your legs were crossed, change the cross of your legs. Take the right hand to the right left arm behind the head and lengthen the left elbow up to the sky the left side of your bum root it down so the whole left side body is getting really long to the space between the ribs on this side and then again you decide how much side bend so if you are protecting your low back and not bending much to the side that's fine you might Lean more from the shoulders and less from the low back. Or you might let the whole length of the spine contribute a little into a side bend. Reach the top arm if you like. Breathe. And if it feels delightful, you can add your own movement here. Moving the elbow, turning the head. So there's a little bit of upper body movement. That's it. 
reach the top arm up, inhale, exhale, release, changing sides, first find your length, right hand behind the head, zip up the belly, get nice and tall, mm -hmm. lengthen the right elbow up while anchoring the right hip down, breathe here, breathe into the space on this side, gradually adding any amount of side bend. While you're still lifted and long. Yeah, you can change your feet at any point if the cross legs is not comfortable. Breathing in, breathing out. And now maybe you reach the top arm. Maybe you turn and tilt. The hand can be behind the head or reaching. What feels good over here? Or what feels interesting over here? That's it. Rest as you need to, Sherry. And come on back to center and release. Take the arms overhead. Reach up tall and again, get as long as you can in the spine. Twist to the right. Stay there and slowly lower your arms. Breathe in. Breathe out. The arms can help a little, but they don't get to take over the twist. Take a couple more breaths, maybe looking over your shoulder in the direction of the twist. Unwind, come to center, reach up overhead, feel all that length. Take the length with you as you twist. Zip up the belly, lower the arms, breathe here. And even in the twist, find that sense of hugging in, the cinching in your drawstring. So some of those same core muscles are engaged right here. Looking over the shoulder, if you like. Breathing in, breathing out. For an, it's for a whole series of, of muscles along the back, yeah. And what we're looking to do especially is to mobilize and open up the muscles that are in the thoracic spine all the way down to the bottom of the rib cage. Yeah. And the instruction, the reason why I'm a little bit obsessed with don't use the arms too much is it's really hard to hurt yourself in a twist if you don't use your arms. So bring your palms together. This is our, here's our little twisting experiment. Bring your palms together, sit tall, and twist to the right. Twist as far as you can to the side. Probably not as far as you can when you use your arms as a lever. This is good news. The more that the muscles in our torso learn to do this twisting, the stronger and the more mobile they become. Come back to center, twist to the other side. Sometimes, and I think yoga has, has taken advantage of this in a way that sometimes does us a disservice. Um, there are lots of poses where the arms are bound or wrapped in different ways. And sometimes we get so focused on all the fancy arm things because it's like, oh, we're going deeper, that we lose the point of Hey, the purpose of, of all this twisty stuff is really to make, make it so the muscles can move with strength and flexibility in all these different ways. Unwind, release, and now arch and round the whole length of the spine. Pull the belly button in and then lift the heart, melt the shoulders. There's some di digestive benefits also to moving that way. Inhale, lift, exhale. There's yoga mythology about like twists detoxifying you. I don't know about that. <laughs> but they definitely can be 
beneficial, especially done mindfully. All right, release. Let's come to tabletop pose, hands and shins. And from tabletop, circle the hips and the shoulders around. Take your time. You can make the circles as generous as you like. Right? If you want to circle so far back that it becomes child's pose for a moment, go ahead. Change direction. Now glide the hips back and do find child's pose and we'll linger there. You might take the arms out in front of you. You can be on your palms or lift up onto your fingertips. Breathe while you're here. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. While in child's pose, walk your hands to the right, side bending. If you want, stack the left hand on top. And breathe, breathe into the side that's stretching right now. Walk the hands to the other side. So as the hands go to the left, if you'd like to stack the right hand on top, you can, or leave the hands separate. Breathe in between the ribs on this side. Inhaling. Exhaling. And walk the hands back in and slowly ease your way to upright. From here, starting in our tabletop pose, take your right arm out to the right and then bend the elbow and dive through. Don't touch the floor. Hover above it and twist however far your body can twist in that direction. And then pull the arm back and open up and twist in this other direction. Yeah. Come back to center. Dive the arm through. The standing arm, it can bend. The elbow can bend. That's fine to facilitate the twist. Good. Pull the elbow back out. Turn this into a twist. Open up. One more time. Nice and slow. Dive through, hover, feel the space between the shoulder blades, and then come back and press the bottom hand down, reach the top arm up, get as wide across the arms as possible, across the chest, and bring the hand down. Change, change sides, other arm out to the side, dive through. And then come back out. Same thing. Dive through, hover. And open up. Hovering shoulder thread the needle twist might be a name that I could give this. <laughs> And then last time, open up, breathe, take up space. Yes, yeah, stay right there. Spread the arms as wide as they can spread and then come back. 
and child's pose. Drop the hips back, knees as wide as they want to be, arms stretch out. They can stretch out actively or they can stretch out while resting. Inhaling, exhaling. Good, easy breath in and out. Return to our hands and knees position. And we'll do some core stabilized hip mobility. So zip up the belly from here. Our mission as we're starting to move the knee around is, yes, the hips will move some, but don't go bananas and move your pelvis all over the place. Keep a bit of that hugging in in your core. Now, if you happen to be doing this from reclining, you can do reclining hip circles. So pull the knee into the chest, take the knee out to the side, swing it around, do a little pulsing movement while you're back there with the foot in the air, mm -hmm, knee bent, pull the knee in, take it out to the side and around, a little pulse in the back. One more time, pull the knee in, take it out to the side around the back and pulse. Feel the glutes, feel the hamstring there. Mm -hmm. And then touch the foot down. Let's stay on, no, let's go to the other leg. I have another thing I want to add to the list, but we'll get there. Pull the knee in, second leg out to the side, around the back, little pulses, feel the hamstring, feel the glutes. Pull the knee in. Out to the side. Now, my friends with low backs that like to backbend, really shore up your abs as you, yeah, I am your people. <laughs> no judgment. I am your people. Pull the knee in. Right? It's around the back where it gets tricky, right? So use your glutes a lot. Use your abs a lot. And then bring the knee down. Take a moment to relax the arms, child's pose, or anything that gets you off the arms and the shoulders where they can relax. <laughs> you can lie down. You can sit up and fold forward if you like. You can hug your knees in from this position so that, yeah, so you can be in neutral spine without a lot of if, if flexion bothers you, or is it the back bendy thing that bothers you? Is it bending? Does this way cause trouble or does that way cause trouble? Oh, okay, okay, all, of, all of the ways. Okay, so move it just wherever it will tolerate for, for right now while it's feeling tender. Yeah. All right. As you ease out of your child's pose, take one leg back behind you and tuck the toes underneath. So this is a stretch for the, for the back of the leg, for the foot. You'll rock back so that you feel the stretch in the calf. And then you'll roll right over the toes so you feel the toe stretch. You can also do this as a reclining leg stretch if you want to grab a belt or something and put the leg in the air. You can do it without a belt as well. So if you're on hands and knees, you're, yeah, rocking a little forward as you push forward. Feel, take that moment to feel the toe stretch and then lean back into the calf stretch. Yeah, pad the knees as they want. Good. Let's change legs. Take the other leg back and rock forward and back. So as you're rocking back, feel the calf stretch. And as you're rocking forward, feel the toe stretch. And then release that. 
from here, tuck your toes underneath, lift your knees and hips, and find your downward facing dog, pedal your feet. If down dog's not your cup of tea today, do a kneeling puppy dog stretch. Arms reach out in front of you, spine is in neutral. Hips are high, but you're on your shins. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Walk your hands and feet toward each other. Hang for a moment, fold it over the toes. You fold as low as you want to. Hold the arms if you like. Sway if you like. Easy breath in and out. And release the arms. And press into the feet, slowly come up to stand. <sighs> Hello and welcome. <laughs> As you come to standing, have your feet facing the same direction. <sighs> Root down evenly into all four corners of each foot. Lift the navel up, root the sitting bones down. Lengthen the crown of the head upwards. Standing tall in Tadasana in mountain pose. From here, inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands down, fold as low as you choose. Halfway up on the inhale, fold back down on the exhale, and up we go on the inhale, reach up, hands to the heart on the exhale, just that one more time, root down and reach up, fold down as low as you choose. Halfway up on an inhale, fold down on an exhale. Press down to rise up and hands to the heart. Good, release the arms. From here, we'll do a little swinging. Let the arms sway. in a tassel-like way. So yeah, this is one of the places where we do use momentum. Good. And come back to center. Take your hands. In this next um, arm movement, your hands can either, if it's comfortable, they'll be behind the head and we'll take our arms back as if you were right at a wall and you were trying to touch your arms to the wall behind you and then come back. Now here's the, the, the thing, here's the thing, the rub, is as your elbows go back, do not do this. Do not do that. I am sorry to disappoint you, my back, my fellow backbendy friends. Really shore up the abs, and this is for the shoulders and the upper back. Now, if the hands behind the head don't, if that hand position doesn't feel right, try it with the fingers on the temples and do it from, from there. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> That's all right. This is where we get to practice it. Root down into your feet, zip up your belly, reach down with your sitting bones, and engage the muscles of your upper back as the elbows go back, and then bring the arms forward. Let the shoulder blades spread out. 
Inhale, take the arms back and maybe give a little squeeze there. And exhale. Mm -hmm. One more time. Root down, lengthen. You could do this in uh, with swinging door arms or with cactus arms if that feels better in the shoulder and the neck. Yeah. So any. Yeah, so see if there's a different height for the arms where you inhale and open and exhale and come together. So there's that just a little bit of let's make some space. Good, roll your shoulders. Yeah. And let's move the hips now. Circle your hips. Go the other way. Good. Come back to center. Bring the feet so they're, they're less than shoulder width, but there can still be space between the feet. Hands on the thighs as if you're about to sit in a chair and then zip up your belly really strongly. Mm -hmm. Press down and slowly come up to stand. Lift up onto your tiptoes. Good. Lower back down. Bend your knees. Have a seat in your chair. Pause there. Mm -hmm. As low as your chair. You decide how high your chair is. Press down. Rise up. Come to tiptoes. Hold tiptoes if you like. Raise your arms. Uh -huh. One more time. Bend the knees. This time, take your chair as low as you want to take it. Your, maybe your hands are at your heart. Maybe your arms reach out if you want to do that. Breathe. Mm -hmm. And then press down, rise up all the way to tiptoes. Hold your tiptoes. Hold tiptoes. Breathe and breathe and breathe. Good. And then back down. Nicely done. Roll your shoulders and shake your legs out. While we're standing, let's do a little something for our hips. Stand on your right foot. Now this is a, uh, if the balance doesn't feel steady, grab a wall or grab some furniture nearby. We're going to do hip circles. Raise your left knee. Now you decide, right? You might make little circles. If it feels okay, go ahead and make larger circles and just see that it agrees with you. Go three times-ish in one direction, then reverse it. Yeah, that's it, Jacob. Mm -hmm. Good, Richard. That's it, Gretchen. And then the other leg. Root down, zip up, and circle. Go the other way. Good, and release. Shake your legs out. Have a seat. Have a seat and either cross your right ankle over your thigh or not. <laughs> there's, your, there's your choice. It's a big choice. So if the hamstrings are tight, it may feel better to lean back a little or to bend your knee some. We're going to use this similar to the way that we do the, the figure four stretch usually on our back. So let's see. If your hamstrings say yes, you can leave the bottom leg straight and come forward. You get kind of a combo of hamstring and the outer hip. And if you're coming forward, you'll start out nice and long, and then you can relax and make it a little bit softer. If you're like, yeah, well, that looks like some kind of torture, <laughs> consider leaning back onto the fingertips and bending the knee. Maybe. <laughs> 
And if all of that seems like, oh, hell no, lie down, <laughs> cross the ankle, right? This is familiar now. And bring the legs in. You can hold however you want to hold to bring the legs close enough to get the stretch. So that outer buttock area that we were strengthening earlier in some of those knee lifts in the clamshells, we're working deep to that area in the hip stretch. All right, unwind and let's change legs. So whatever variation you were exploring on leg number one, try that on leg number two. If you bump up against an, I don't know about that, <laughs> stay there and breathe. If you bump up against a, an oh hell no, then consider repositioning. Breathe. In all cases, breathe. Unwind. We're going to stay with the hips, but do a little different variation of this. There's a reclining and a seated version, so depending on what you're in the mood for. So instead of having the knee out to the side, we're going to cross more toward the midline. So if you want to do it in the same style, one leg out and one leg crossed over, the top leg comes over, so it's not so much the uh, ankle on the leg, but I'm taking my foot past. Now, if you're like, oh, I don't know about this, I find that bringing my other leg, bringing my other foot around actually makes it more comfortable, but I don't know, if, you know, I know that's not true for everyone. So see, if you're like, well, this is even worse, <laughs> then you'll make the same shape lying down. So if lying down, thigh over thigh, bring the legs in. And if you're lying down, walk your hands, one hand to each shin or leg or whatever you can find. It's like you're helping hold the, the, leg, the lower legs in position here. It's kind of a gomukhasana variation of legs. How's that feel in there, Ben? Is that too much on the low back? Okay. Do you get any hip stretch in it, or is it all back and hamstring? You know what? Do the lying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If it feels good, then then by all means, stay there. Unwind gently and change sides. So yeah, if you're getting a tug on the low back and it's like, ooh, that's kind of nice, you can absolutely stay there. If you're getting a tug on the low back and it feels like, ooh, that's a bit much, then, then try the reclining version. Each way has its benefits. I find that I get a better hip stretch when I'm doing the reclining version. But sometimes I like to do the seated version. And breathe. How's it going in there, Tim? <laughs> it's okay. And last couple breaths, gently ease up, ease out. 
unwind your legs from whatever position you're in. If you're reclining, you might do a little windshield wipers. If you're seated, swing your legs either bent or straight. Just move the legs around in some way. And let's all come onto our backs, hug the knees and rock. If you have handy either a block, a folded blanket, or a bolster, we'll do a supported bridge pose before we settle into our Shavasana. So in supported bridge pose, the back bend is minimal. Um, but there's a little inversion happening, and we've got some nice support. So I'm going to use a block, because that's what I've got handy. But you can absolutely use something softer. The knees bend, the feet are flat. As you peel your hips up, your block goes underneath you. Oh, I forgot I'm on a blanket here. And you'll make sure that the back of your pelvis and your sacrum are nicely supported. The back bend really should be in the upper back and chest. Now, if this feels a bit dicey, maybe you're going to be on a small folded blanket and keep the lift small and see how that feels. If this is nice and you'd like to lift the hips higher, you can always add either tilt the, turn the block to the next height or add another blanket. And let the props do the work here. Now, while you're here, you're getting some nice benefits of a gentle inversion. If you want to explore a hip flexor stretch, you start to straighten one leg or even both legs until you feel a stretch in the front of the thighs. Last option. And you can blend these at any time. You can choose just one, or you can do a sampler platter. If you want to add to the inversion part, make sure your support is steady underneath you. Use your hands, palms down on the mat for a little extra support. And take the legs up in the air. So your inversion, your way, Supported bridge. This is a supported shoulder stand version over a block. For my yoga scholar friends, it's also a Viparita Karani, but without the wall. Let the breath flow gently in and out. Find the most relaxing version of this pose. We'll stay just a little longer here. If the legs are up in the air, gently, gradually bend the knees and touch one foot down and then both feet. 
from the supported bridge position. Press into your feet and slide your support out from underneath you. And come down slowly and hug the knees once you're down. Rock a little side to side. You might take a twist of your choice. Five or six breaths on each side. Take your time. When you have completed both sides of your twist, you might hug the knees one last time. And when you're ready, stretch out for Shavasana for our final resting pose. Gather any props that make you comfortable. Take a breath in and gently let it out. You can take legs up a wall or over your props. Be comfortable. Breathing in, squeezing the muscles. Breathing out, letting go. Is that comfortable, Anita? Okay. The toes, the legs, the feet, all relax. The hands, the arms, and the shoulders rest.
plugging into the earth. Feel the support and the stability beneath you. And let yourself be replenished, restored. Start deepening the breath. And gently turn the head to one side and then to the other. And stretch the arms overhead. Take a moment to stretch and yawn, reawaken the body. And draw the knees in one at a time. Rock over to one side and sit tall. As you find your way to upright, and close the eyes. Bring the hands to the heart. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, lower the chin. And take a moment in gratitude for someone or something in your day to day. And thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste. Mm, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, was the sound okay? I feel like I'm breathing like heavily into your ear. <laughs> no, Did I couldn't it... hear any breathing. Oh, okay. It doesn't it bother you? No, it doesn't. Like I don't act, I don't feel the like the mic I don't feel. I was just like, oh, I hope I don't sound like Darth Vader up in oh, there. Oh, you don't, not at all. <laughs> okay. And you have to wear gloves too? Yeah, that's the, the new uh, health guideline from uh, for So LA the people... For for the time being. Sounded good, thank you. The morning people didn't have them on. 